In this video, you will learn exponents in algebra. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to master 11 plus exam techniques to land in your dream grammar school, start right now by subscribing and clicking on the bell so you don't miss anything. The thing in exponents in algebra is that we have inverse operations just like we do in other things. So for example, we know that addition and subtraction, they are inverse operations. We also know that multiplication and division, they are also inverse operations. So just like the ones above, in algebra, especially in exponents, exponents and roots are also inverse operations. So if you have an exponent and a root, they will cancel each other out. So since we now know inverse operations in exponents, let's have a look at an example. And we have the square root of x equals 5. And as you guys could see, we have a square root. And we know that to undo a root, so to undo a root, we have to use exponents because they cancel each other out. They're inverse operations. Because we're square rooting the x, to undo the square root, we have to square it. Because square root of x squared will cancel each other out. So now, the thing to remember here is that we need to do the same thing to both sides. So square the other side as well, so square the 5. Now, the square root and the square, obviously they will cancel each other out because exponents and roots are inverse operations and they undo each other. So this square root right here and this square undo each other, which means we're left with x. Next thing, we have to work out the 5 squared. So we know that 5 squared can be written as 5 times 5. And we know that 5 times 5 is 25. So that means our answer is x equals 25. So now let's have a look at another example, which is cube root of x equals 6. So in the previous example, when we had a square root, we squared it. Because in this example, we have a cube root, and we need to undo this cube root, we're not going to square like we did in the previous examples. We only squared because we had a square root. Because we have a cube root in this example, we're going to cube it instead. Because cube root of x cubed will cancel each other out. So before we cancel, we need to do the same thing to both sides. So cube the other side as well. So now, we'll cancel each other out because exponents and roots are inverse operations. They undo each other out. So the cube root and the cube will cancel each other out, which means we're left with x. And for the other side, 6 cubed can be written as 6 times 6 times 6. And 6 times 6 times 6 will give you an answer of 216. So now, let's have a look at this example. And this example is x squared equals 64. And as you guys can see, in this example, we are squaring. Because we're squaring, we have to undo this example a bit differently. So now, we know that exponents and roots are inverse operations, so they undo each other. And in this case, we have x squared. And to square is obviously an exponent. To undo this exponent, we know we have to use a root. We're not going to use any root. We're going to use a square root. But remember, you need to do the same thing to both sides for the equation to be balanced. So square root the other side as well. So this x squared and the square root will cancel each other out. Square root and x squared cancel each other out, which means we're left with x. And then square root of 64 will give us 8. So our answer is x equals 8. But with this question, we have a bit more to do than just having x equals 8. Because we know that a negative number times another negative number will equal a positive number. So if this is the case, then going back, we have square root of 64 equals 8. And this means 8 times 8 will equal 64. So if you remember back about what we said, a negative number times a negative number equals a positive, then this must mean that minus 8 times minus 8 will also equal 64. Because we said that a negative number times a negative number in this case, minus 8 times minus 8 will equal a positive number, so 64, and 64 is positive. 
So in this example, as you guys could see, we have two answers. We have x equals 8 and x equals minus 8. So you guys may wonder which one is the correct answer. Well, the answer can be both because x equals 8 will also give you 64 and x equals minus 8 will also give you 64. So when you have a situation like this, when you get two answers, one positive, one negative, you're always going to find your answers like this. So x equals plus or minus 8. Because as we all know, this answer could either have plus 8, a positive 8 or a negative 8. So because of that, we write a plus or minus sign in front of the 8 like this. So that means our answer to this question is x equals plus or minus 8. Let's have a look at this example. And this example is x cubed equals 27. And as you guys could see, we have a cube. To undo this cube, we obviously have to do a cube root. And remember, do the same thing to both sides. Cube root the other side as well. Next thing, the cube and the cube root cancel each other out, which means we're left with x. And then work of the other side as well. Cube root of 27 will give us 3. Now, you guys may wonder whether we could get an answer of minus 3 as well. Just like we did in the previous example, we got two answers, a positive 1 and a negative 1. So you guys may wonder whether we could get a positive or negative answer for this one. So now, let's say we get another answer of x equals minus 3. So if we were to get two answers and then if our other answer was x equals minus 3, then minus 3 cubed will be minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3. And then as we all know, minus 3 times minus 3 will give us 9. And then 9 times minus 3 will give us minus 27 and as we all know minus 27 and 27 are not the same so the thing to remember in this example is that whenever you have an odd root you never get a minus answer you only get a minus answer when you have a positive root so for example an odd root like cube root you only get one answer so that means our answer will be x equals 3. Now to learn more on Level Plus Maps, click the video on the right. And to learn the previous topic, click the video on the left. So take your pick. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.